Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started here. We have the vehicle backed in just in case we do have to get an engine hoist in at some point. We're going to start with a 10 millimeter socket and it helps on an extension like this. We're going after the negative battery terminal. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. Uh, we have a lot of electrical in this process, especially the starter, and uh, you do not want to have power uh, and short out things. So we're going to go ahead and come over to the air box now. Just have a flat screwdriver here. We're going to undo that clamp. We're going to come over here and you're going to push on the bottom of this tab to slide off this uh, little hose here. And there's another one on the other side, so just push down and slide those away. We now are going to undo the throttle body here, uh, at least just where the intake connects to the throttle body. So another flathead screwdriver, we're just removing that. Now we can just slide this entire air box off and out of the way. Now we're going to come through with our needle nose pliers here and you're going to see all of these little clips that they have. They're like zip ties and they're in there pretty firm so we're going all the way around the intake manifold everywhere we can find these and uh, we're just basically prying them up and off to get this harness off of the intake manifold. Now the intake manifold actually has a cover on the top. It looks like the intake manifold but it's a cover that's going to clamshell uh, away from this because there are some of these clips on the back of this and they're very hard to get to. So just for a second we're going to cut forward into the video a little bit just so you can see these clips. They're on the back of the intake manifold cover. They're really hard to get off so we would recommend getting them off separately once we get the intake manifold out. But this is what they look like. There's three of them and so um, just keep an eye out for that. You can try to get them off but you might want to wait till later on uh, in the video because they're all here right on the back very hard to get to so going back uh, we're going to take off the first two studs that are on the front of the intake manifold cover and there are actually two bolts as well on the back side now we can go after the actual intake manifold bolts so if you look at them they're the gray ones and they come out and then you have to turn them sideways to actually get them all the way out now you can access these going down through the holes in the intake manifold cover that go directly down onto all of those bolts it also helps if you remove just the coil pack on the very far driver side like this and get it out of the way this is going to help you get in there to one of these back ones so you pull up on the tab the red release tab and then you pinch it and that will get that coil pack out of your way and so then as you see back in into this corner now you can have access to one of these back intake manifold bolts now these bolts you want to take them out all the way because they will fall back down in and uh, prevent the intake manifold from coming back out uh, since they do have that lock on them uh, so next we're opening the lock on the throttle body connector here so we're just pulling it forward and then we're gonna pinch it and so then this uh, will slide right off a little help with the screwdriver there the alternator also has a uh, electrical pin just gonna pinch that one now we have another breather hose here so same thing just pinch it and then slide it off over here there's another one that has a lock we're gonna slide it out with the screwdriver then we're going to pinch on the back of it and then it's going to slide off. Now we have another breather hose here so again just push in on the gray tab and slide it off. Now the intake manifold we're going to be able to lift this up and we're basically clamshelling it out of here. Again those bolts for the intake manifold will keep it from coming out and they'll fall back down in so we want to extract all of these and that's really going to help you. We also took this uh, part out here for the throttle body just so we could turn it over and you could see what its clip looks like. I wouldn't recommend taking this out but uh, anyway the clip on this you push down with a screwdriver to get that gray tab back and then you're gonna pinch it and we're gonna go ahead and walk that one off so that's for the throttle body. Now we can walk the intake manifold out if it's not coming out make sure all the intake manifold bolts are out because they will fall back down and, and uh, keep it in there vacuum it this out the best that you can our intake ports are now open and you don't want anything falling down into the intakes uh, so we can go ahead and lift up on the cover here as you can see 
and we have a mat that we're going to take out. We put trash bags in all the intake manifold uh, ports for now. And then going back to this, if you haven't done it already, it is easier to pry these out once you have the intake manifold out and you have a little more room. So again, we just went through with our pliers and we popped all these Christmas tree tabs out. But uh, this cover was a nightmare. This harness is in there really well with these big uh, clips there. So we just got behind them and popped them off. And so again, we'd recommend doing that, that part after the intake manifold is removed. Uh, but if you can get back in there, uh, you can. So we're going to go ahead and take out this mat now. And this is a foam piece that covers our fuel system. And so you want to be careful with it. Of course, we vacuumed it off first, but you can still see all the dirt and everything that's down in here. So we're going to go ahead and whack this down, but uh, that can be pretty dirty. So uh, now we have our fuel rails and everything that are exposed here that you can see. Okay, next we're going to go ahead after the serpentine belt, so a half inch breaker bar we're pushing down on the tensioner, and then we're just taking the belt off. We're going to slide it through the pulley. Now we have a 24 millimeter socket, so this is for going on the crankshaft, and we're going to be able to uh, walk this belt off. This next one's the AC belt, it's a stretch belt, so you pull on it. And then as you rotate the crank, we're walking it off. That's the way that you get this off if you want to keep the belt, otherwise you cut the belt. We're using the same process for our vacuum pump over here on the right. We're just pulling on the belt as we turn the crankshaft and it walks it right off. Uh, an old O2 sensor harness worked great to pull on it. So we went ahead and yanked that one off. Again, watch those trash bags so they're not getting sucked into the engine while you're doing this. Okay, we got our 13 millimeter socket here taking off the alternator bolt. Make sure the battery is disconnected like we did in the beginning. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and take this off and put the nut back on so we don't lose it. The alternator is just two of these bolts here, 15 millimeter. So we're going to take off uh, both of these and they're very long bolts. They're in there pretty firm and the alternator's pinched in there. So go ahead and remove these two bolts. The one on the left was really long, as you could see. And this alternator is going to be stuck in here pretty tight. It's almost pressed in to the bracket. So we're going to come and grab a, a pry bar, and just give it a little bit of a pop here, and now we can walk the alternator out. So now that the alternator's out of the way, we're going to come in here with our 13 millimeter. We're going to take off this bracket here that's holding our air conditioning line away from the engine, but it's, it needs to come off. So we're going to go ahead and remove that. We like to put bolts back everywhere we can so we don't lose them. Now we're coming in here with our 13 millimeter and we have a, a ground there that we're removing. We have the bracket for the air conditioning that we're removing. And we have the air conditioning bolts themselves. So we're going to go ahead and remove uh, the two bolts for the air conditioning system. So one is really long, comes right off that AC compressor. There's a really deep one here, a 15 millimeter. And so that's going to be another really long bolt for our alternator bracket. And we're going to take a five millimeter socket that's really small. We're putting it on the front of this air conditioning one and we're taking the stud itself out. Okay, so that had a nut on the front of it. Now we took the stud itself out and we can uh, basically pry on this and get this alternator bracket off. But it was attached to the air conditioning uh, as you just saw us remove it. So now we have the alternator bracket out of the way. We're going to come back in and we're going to take off the tensioner. Now we're going to come in with uh, two of our uh, 10 millimeter bolts. I think they were just to take off our radiator. A fan so we're gonna move that line out of the way the uh, the lower hose can just be pulled out here's our clips for the radiator fan as you see you push down on it and you slide these ones off so they take a little uh, wiggling there but uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove one now it has the same plug on both sides but one's reversed where you can't see it as well we got a, tr a Christmas tree plug here that we're removing to get it away from get this harness away from the electric fan. We're just going to walk that out with a pair of pliers. Okay. Uh, we also have a Christmas tree plug for our two air conditioning line heat uh, trans cooler lines. Okay, now we're going to bring in a little funnel here. We're going to drain the coolant 
out of the radiator so the upper hose here we're going to get a lot of it out we're going to also take our pliers and take off these two uh, this is for the water pump we're trying to get as much coolant out of here as we can now these two lines that are leaving the uh, water pump will go up into the heater core in the firewall and so these are really hard to get off with these clips so something we did as we put a zip tie around the back of the tab where you're supposed to pinch it and by zip tying it tight on that tab it's pinching it for us and we slid it right off there we go. There we go. So this top one goes here the left one goes here now we're going to go ahead and use a shop vac and we're going to suck out as much coolant as we can with our pliers coming up on the top where the thermostat is, we're going to pinch uh, this little connector here and uh, just remove that bracket off of it. So again, that's going into the thermostat. We're going to pop that hose off, get it out of the way. We're going to leave the thermostat on as we pull the entire pump out. There is another clip here for our coolant temperature sensor. You lift up on the tab. This one had broken previously. And then you pinch and remove it. Okay, next for this one, we're going to pull the safety tab out, and then we're just going to pinch on that safety tab at the back and slide that one off. The one to the right has another safety tab, so we're going to take our pick, and we're going to pull the red tab out, and then we're going to pinch on the front of it, and then slide it off as well. A little tip here, too, is sometimes we will spray a little bit of Windex on these and let it kind of work its way in there and slide these off. But, of course, you don't want to get a lot of water or corrosion inside the plug, but that's just something every once in a while we can do. So this one slid right off. Okay, we've got some more Christmas tree uh, clips here that we're removing for the harness going across the front of the water pump. Uh, then we have this nut right here that we're taking off for the stud that's just a wiring harness bracket there's another one on the very far end of the water pump as well now we're just working around the water pump everywhere we find a bolt for it we're removing it and we'll show you that in a minute uh, we're going to take off the lower hose here as well and uh, now we can remove the water pump so just watch out for all of the bolts because there are some that are hidden down in there. So just follow the water pump itself all the way around. On the side of the water pump, there's also a bracket that was keeping it from coming out. So here's what the water pump looks like. There are two gaskets on the front that come right off. And next, we used a shop vac to get as much of the coolant out of it as we could. We just don't want any of it going into the cylinder heads. Here's the bolts for the water pump. Next we're looking at the steering shaft. We marked it with uh, the relationship here so we know to put it on exactly how it came off and it just uses some 15 millimeter bolts. So we're taking two 15 millimeter wrenches here and going in opposite directions for the bottom one. So we're going to go ahead and remove that one and it comes out like this. Now we're doing the same with the top one. It has a, a locking bolt and once those are out we can slide it up off of the of uh, steering rack and then down off of the steering column shaft. Next we're going to take off the heat shield bolt. So just 10 millimeter and there's three of these. One here, there's one back here, and finally there's also one a little bit lower on the heat shield down here. So just remove those three 10 millimeter bolts. Okay, so there's also one for the dipstick tube for the oil. Next, we're going to go ahead and take off the heat shield on the passenger side. Same thing. It has two bolts up top and then one down below, 10 millimeter. We're going to go ahead and remove this out of the way. These are where the bolts were. Okay, now, we do want to pull the ignition leads out, so uh, pliers might help, but you don't want to tear these. The best way is basically grabbing it with your hand and twisting it. And sometimes you'll hear a pop because you're breaking it loose off of the spark plug. It's... Uh, so you just got to kind of twist these and pull on them. And so uh, just be as careful as you can. The metal part is more of a heat shield that just spins. So it's not going to really do anything for you as far as trying to pull on the metal part. So you're just kind of pinching on it, it itself on the rubber on the end. So go ahead and twist it. And that's uh, breaking it loose off of the spark plug. And then it will pull out. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just uh, wiggle these out the best that we can. Okay, and so they can be a little stubborn. This one had uh, <laughs> the 
part come off. Now, PB Blaster, you want to spray all of the uh, exhaust manifold bolts. I let mine soak overnight. Okay, so once all these were up and out of the way, now we can go after the exhaust manifold bolts. And 13. it's really nice. There's only uh, five of them on each side Let's down the center. So we're just taking a ratcheting wrench here. That was our uh, best tool to use for that. Once it's off, we can slide our exhaust gaskets okay. out. Okay, from underneath the car, what we're going to do is take uh, some long extensions and remove uh, the three bolts that hold the wow. exhaust manifold. Okay. So they're just nuts that come off and it's it just bolts. slides right off. So very easy. So we used a 15 millimeter um, shallow socket to get the right angle on that. But we also needed a deep socket on the passenger side. The studs are longer. So uh, with long extensions, we got up in here and uh, we were able to get these off but you can see there's three of them and this, these ones had studs as you could see that were a lot longer on the passenger side so we did need to get up in there with the, the deep socket and it worked out just fine. So we just did the same thing on the passenger side, removed all the exhaust manifold bolts. Okay, we're gonna come and do all of uh, the ignition lead so here on the passenger side, so what we're doing is just pulling up on the tab and then pinching. And we're going to do this on the passenger side and driver side. Okay, now we can take this uh, cover. It's really just a fake cover that's going over the top. And it's just uh, clipped on, so just pull directly up to pop it off. And then we can walk it forward. And we can even remove this uh, uh, positive crankcase ventilation tube as well. Uh, it doesn't need to be on there so we'll go ahead and pinch the gray tab like we've been doing earlier and we can just pop that up and out so you just push, push on, on that tab and pop out. it off uh, so now we can get this uh, fake cover out of our way it's just a piece of plastic okay now we're coming through and uh, basically there's another bracket here uh, that was somewhat hidden we're going to take that off Okay, driver's side, same thing. We're pulling the tab up and we're pulling all of these uh, coil pack, ignition coil packs off. So just uh, disconnect yeah, all good. those. Now we're looking at our fuel system here. You see the two fuel rails on each side with the high pressure lines going through. And we're gonna remove that high pressure pump in the back. So it has a plug here, electrical one. And uh, it's hard to see, but it does have just a pinch tab on the back of it. So we're gonna go ahead and pinch that and slide that off of the high pressure fuel pump. So as you see, we uh, pinched it and slid it off. We used a little bit of Windex on this one as well, just to kind of lube it up. Uh, on the right hand side, there's a locking uh, harness over here. So we push the, the lock up forward and then we're pushing down right here and uh, sliding this one off. This one again was stuck pretty bad too. Just a slight little bit of Windex to get in there and lube it up. Again, you don't want to get that into the electrical uh, connection itself, but uh, that just really helped kind of slide that off. On the driver's side, on that side of the fuel rail, there's another one. It's the same thing. It's just in there backwards. Next, make sure you have your safety goggles and depressurize the fuel system if you want by pulling a fuel pump fuse. Ours has been sitting, but we go ahead and pop the safety clip off and we're gonna take our 3 8 inch fuel disconnect tool and we'll show you how this works. Push forward on the line, push in. There. Yeah, there's no pressure, so we're okay. So let's just show that again too. So go around the line, forward on the line, in with the tool, slide it off. We then put the fuel line in a bag and zip tied it to keep it uh, clean. So again, be careful, you don't want fuel spraying on you. We're gonna use an 11 16 or a 17 millimeter line wrench. Either one of those sizes seem to fit okay. 17 is a little bit better. And we're gonna basically put it here. And just remember, you might have more fuel spray out, so you gotta be careful. But we're breaking that loose counterclockwise and we're uh, just turning this one here. We're sliding this one off here. Now these are one-time use lines. They are not supposed to be reused. So we're gonna go ahead and everywhere we've removed these, we're replacing the line uh, with a brand new one. So again, they just kind of break right off. You might have some residual fuel coming out of them, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and just slide these off. There's one that's bolted down in the middle. So we're gonna go ahead and just uh, 
remove that and remove it on the fuel rail sides. Okay, we're going to leave our fuel rails connected to the cylinder head. Uh, next, we're going to take this hose off entirely. We're going to take a 10 millimeter socket okay. now and we're going to go around the outside so of the valve cover around. everywhere that there's a bolt. Don't worry about the coil packs themselves or the other stud there uh, for holding that fake black cover off. But once we remove all of the outer ones only, we can pop this cover off it's and now we can see our this. valve train. So as you can see, these are the holes. Uh, and so we're going to go ahead and take our 5 8 inch spark plug socket and we're going to take out the spark plug for cylinder number one. So on this GM vehicle, cylinder number one is the driver's side front uh, cylinder. So we're gonna take the plug out so we can see down in here. Bags out. Now what you're gonna see as you turn the crank is the intake valve will open and then it will close and then the exhaust one will open and close. So right as the exhaust one closes, and we see the piston coming to top dead center, we know we're on the exhaust stroke. So what we're doing is with our camera, we're watching the piston go up, and then right when it's about to start coming down, we know we're at the top dead center, and that's where we wanna be before we try to remove our uh, high pressure fuel Intake pump. Valve is opening. So we're just turning the crankshaft with that 24 just millimeter away. socket and so we're watching that piston come up and right when it starts to come back down we're at top dead center we're going to stop there and then remove our high pressure fuel pump and take valve is closed piston coming up and now the exhaust valve is almost to the top there you see it just start to go back down there right there okay so let me reverse it go back up just a little bit there, that looks like it's top dead center. Now that we're at top dead center on the exhaust stroke, we can continue with our high pressure fuel pump. And so on the side, we're gonna pry off the side of this clip and we're gonna remove these harnesses to give us more room to the bolts for the high pressure fuel pump. Mm -hmm. So they're a little tricky and a little One, tight. Two, so three. now we have a 13 millimeter. And what we're doing is we're removing these bolts evenly on both sides. Three. There is a big spring mechanism because One, the high two, pressure fuel pump three. here is being operated off of the camshaft. Mm -hmm. So if the camshaft is at the wrong position, mm -hmm. it can be putting pressure on the bottom of this pump and damage it as we're trying to take it off. So that's why we had to put the cylinder at top dead center on the exhaust stroke is the recommendation. So as you're starting to take these out, you can see it should come out evenly. It might rise a little bit, but now we can pull the high pressure fuel pump off. Yeah, looking at the ones that are up. Next, we're going to remove the rockers and the push rods. So we want to go on to these ones that the spring does not have pressure on first. I believe it was an 8 millimeter to break this loose. And then what we want to do is uh, remove these and keep them in order in how they came off and then pull out the push rod and keep that in order. So it is best to keep these in order if you're going to reuse these parts. They should go back exactly where they came from. Now back to our crankshaft. You can turn the crankshaft back and forth. And as you see, what it will do is release the tension on the spring that we're working on. And uh, then we can go on to the next one. So as you see, we took the pressure off that spring. And now we can break it loose. Now something we did just for reference is we took a laser level when we knew the crank was at top dead center and made our own marks on it since GM doesn't seem to have any of these marks on their timing cover. And so this is completely optional. We just like marking things up uh, ahead of time in case we ever need to use them later. Next we're going to go ahead and remove the starter. So we're going to come under the vehicle. Again, make sure the battery's disconnected for this as we did in the beginning. There's still power going to the starter otherwise. So there's just two 13 millimeter bolts that are going straight up into the starter and then off to the side there's some 10 millimeter bolts for the uh, little heat shield and a dust shield on the transmission. So just go ahead and start with those. Okay. Take that out right there. Okay, two 13 millimeter bolts for the starter. Slide it right up. Okay. 
<laughs> Ten millimeter bolt out. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and take out the head bolts. There are a total of 10, and so we're gonna go in reverse sequence of how we tighten them down. So the first one we're gonna remove is the 10, then we're gonna go nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, then two and one. We're gonna do 90 degrees on all of them. Then we're gonna go back and do 180 degrees on all of them, and then we should be able to take the bolts out from there. Okay, bolt number 10. Okay, breaking it loose. 13 millimeter Allen. You will notice that on the driver's side, the very front bolt is actually a 13 millimeter hex. So you will need to get the little 13 millimeter hex uh, socket for this, and then the rest of them are the 15 millimeter bolts. Mm -hmm. This one is actually an Allen, 13 millimeter Allen. So when we break this one loose, okay, 90 degrees. And now we're gonna go in that same sequence. Back to, then these ones, those ones, and then the center. We did have to go to a smaller breaker bar to fit into the back one, so you might need different ones. So after breaking them all loose 90 degrees, then going back through and doing 180 degrees in the same sequence, then we could take the rest of the bolts all out and lift off the cylinder head. So this technique just helps the cylinder head uh, be evenly taken off and supposedly helps it from warping. Uh, now on the back of the cylinder head there was a ground as well, so make sure that you take this off. Alright, there you go. Cylinder head's out, pulled it with the fuel rail so it didn't drop junk into the cylinder. Next we removed the old head gasket and just make sure that you're careful taking it off and you don't want a lot of things falling down into the engine if you can help it. Next, we used a 10 millimeter socket to break loose the lifter trays. So we went ahead and just uh, broke it loose and removed it. Make sure this doesn't fall down in there and keep it handy because you'll be reusing this okay, bolt. Let's turn the... Okay, the trays are gonna come out and it's gonna have our collapsible DOD ones here. And then the regular lifters are still inside. Okay, so this came out like this. I've got the holes here in the bottom. And it is squared off so they don't turn side to side. But here's our rollers. These ones look good. Oh, yeah. Okay, just using a magnet to pull this one out. You'll see the line that's engraved in this one, meaning a little There's piece a of metal line. most likely got stuck down in there. Okay, so that's how it came out. Yeah, that looks a little chewed up. I think that's where that's we're it. getting our squeaking. Okay. The back two, the back the two are our DODs. Okay, so we're doing the same thing, taking these out 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 90 degrees first on all of them, then 180 degrees, and then another 180 degrees till they're out. One of these on the back of the head. Okay. 
looks really good. Yeah, this one came out. So yeah, it's like that arrow is on the top. Okay. <laughs> okay so the main takeaway here is that uh, we didn't have a problem with our displacement on demand cylinders uh, that could have been a problem in the future I was afraid I was going to bend a push rod and so I did want to delete that system while I was at it but the real problem we really had was one of the traditional rollers had eaten up and here's one that wasn't as bad but if you see the lines in it that's from metal debris getting down in and carving into the roller and so this was uh, the lifter that was past the the very bad one this one as we shake it you could hear it was starting to go out so it wasn't too far behind the other ones but the worst one was this one here so if you look at this you can see how very badly pitted this is that roller is completely eaten away so that metal all the metal shavings from that are have gone throughout the, the engine in other places and that's the concern now um, and you can see where those pieces of metal have gotten stuck in the other uh, lifters and caused the lines in them and everything like that so this one sounds like a maraca as we shake it uh, you know this one's bad this one's completely horrible now once I knew that a lifter was bad I knew that the cam would also be bad so that's the uh, the whole idea here and going to a DOD delete that it would require a new cam anyway that was the direction we wanted to go but if you look down and you look and see the cam you can see the lines in it where the other uh, bad lifter was uh, making its damage to the camshaft and then the other part was even worse uh, where that really bad lifter has eaten it away so there's really not much you can do here. The cam would have to be replaced anyway, so great time to delete this uh, di uh, this displacement on demand or this active fuel management. These uh, collapsible lifters can fail in the open or closed position, and they can bend push rods or cause misfires, and so it was a system I wanted to delete anyway, but here's a look at uh, the cam as well. If you look where the uh, really bad roller was, uh, on that uh, really bad lifter you can see how badly it ate the cam up so at this point there's nothing you can do other than uh, swap the cam out anyway so great time for the uh, DOD delete which is what we're doing Next we're going to get into cleaning up the cylinder heads and so we have this foaming gasket remover from Permatex. This stuff worked really well however one bottle did one of the cylinder heads. So you really want to buy enough of it that you can be cleaning off both the cylinder heads and the block where this mate. So you would need probably four of those or more. Uh, we then resorted to basically plastic scrapers and uh, we were also using microfibers with a you know brake parts cleaner now at this point this is where you might want to think about taking your head somewhere to have them gone through uh, decluttered also maybe even milled down uh, so that's up to you and if you had any kind of overheating issues uh, if you had blown the head gasket, that's where you could have some really bad warpage in the cylinder head. So at this point, uh, this is where you want to consult a machine shop and get an idea of what you should be doing to have your heads gone through and uh, milled down and uh, cleaned properly. So we just went through, we let this sit and soak, and then with brake parts cleaner, we went and cleaned up everything that we could, um, mainly where the head gasket's gonna be sealing. And you want a nice, clean, flat surface across the whole thing so there's no high points uh, in your head gaskets that are gonna be hit. So you can see the factory machine marks on here. This looked pretty good. Um, Anyway, this is a long, tedious uh, process here. We're trying not to get junk down into the water jacket holes for the, uh, the coolant. So do the best that you can to clean these up. And again, I really recommend at this point, you might want to just take your heads to some machine shop that you trust and consult with them and see what they want to do. But 
One huge area of concern are the injectors, especially if they're left in. You can see how gunked up this was, and so uh, we basically cleaned this off with brake parts cleaner and uh, a microfiber with uh, a screwdriver on the end of it very gently went around and cleaned those up. The fuel has been spraying through these, but you can see how gunked up these are. It's amazing that uh, the engine was running as well as it was. Next, we're going to remove the radiator. We want to make sure that there's room to get the camshaft out. So you want to take a pick, and if you're looking at the front of these radiator lines, you come in behind it with the pick, and you have to pry these little rings out. And so you'll get a good idea here what this looks like. So just get under it on one side, and as it pries up, make sure it doesn't fling across into the engine bay where you can't find it, but you're basically prying one side up and out of that little notch that it's in. So the radiator has lines on both sides. On the driver's side, it's going to be for the transmission cooler, so you will lose a little bit of the transmission fluid. But as you can see, we're just popping that clip out uh, from one side, getting it out of that uh, little channel notch, and then pulling the clip out. So be careful with these and put them somewhere where you won't lose them. Then the lines just pull straight out, and so you're going to do that on all of these. Uh, this line I'm working on, you see the transmission fluid start to come out here, and it's pretty tight, and this one loops around to the back side where it then goes in uh, to the AC condenser. So pull all of these lines out, and then the top one, um, we're going to move a line here. This is on the uh, passenger side, so we're going to go ahead and remove that off. There's uh, a 13 millimeter bolt on each side for the radiator itself. So go ahead and remove both of those. Uh, there's also this little radiator hose here at the bottom and we've drained the fluid so not a lot's coming out. Um, to get to the little bracket that's down in here that's holding the radiator to the AC condenser, we, uh, we can get in here okay. It is uh, easier if you take the air box out. Now the radiator sits down inside of uh, the good. AC condenser, so you're actually lifting the AC condenser, you're pushing down on this tab, and you're lifting the AC condenser up and then out. Okay, so we need to lift this tab and the bottom tab up first, and that gives you a lot more wiggle room. Then on this side, it's the same thing. This tab has to come out, just it lifts straight up and out, as well as this tab is lifting up and out as well when we push in that tab, just like the other side, but it helps to get one side loose first than the other. So we're gonna go ahead and leave the AC condenser in so we don't have to discharge the AC system and just remove the radiator. So now we're going to remove the mass airflow meter. It has a locking tab that we lift up on, then pinch. Then the air box can pop out. That will give you a lot more room. Now what we're doing here, um, we're marking the relationship on the crankshaft for top dead center since we did remove that spark plug and we could see we were at top dead center. And this is just, again, for our knowledge. Next, we're gonna install our crankshaft holding tool that goes on the flywheel. So we had removed the starter earlier, and what we're gonna do is put this on up in here. It just put the two bolts in where the starter bolts go, and you'll see the little teeth will start to mesh with the flywheel. Now, at first, it won't be lining up just perfect, and it really helps to have somebody up there just kinda of wiggle the crank back and forth slightly, and uh, these teeth will line up a little bit better. And as you tighten it down, uh, those teeth will lock into the flywheel and that will keep the flywheel from moving and what that's going to do is allow us to break that uh, crankshaft bolt loose uh, without the engine spinning because an automatic transmission will spin even when it's in park. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and install this tool and we will be installing and reinstalling this tool, uh, taking it off and putting it back on several times throughout this process. Uh, but that's what it looks like and uh, the tool worked really well so just make sure you put those two bolts in don't cross thread anything um, i used an extension to get up in there and get those bolts started uh, but what we want to do is make sure that we have that flywheel locked um, and in place twenty four millimeter now we're going to go ahead and take the crankshaft bolt out and so we're going to hit this with an impact 
Uh, we do have uh, our uh, locking tool for the transmission that we've installed that helps keep the crankshaft from moving if you need to do that too if you don't have an impact. The impact you can actually take this bolt out without having to really hold the flywheel s uh, still and that is a one-time use bolt. Uh, next we're taking our three jaw puller and so we're putting the puller through the crankshaft and it's locking onto the back of the uh, crankshaft here and so this is kind of how we have it set up. We have a bolt that we're putting down the center and so that way it's going to come in and stop on the crankshaft as you see here. Now our puller, uh, the, this part here was actually too short so what we did was we put a socket on the end of it just to act as an extension. So as you see we have a, a socket that's pushing on the bolt and uh, now we're just turning this and walking the uh, balancer off. And so uh, that's how the three jaw puller works. And uh, check the video description. We'll put some links on some similar ones to what we have here. But uh, that uh, balancer came off pretty easy. It is keyed, so there is a keyway on it. Next, we're going after our vacuum pump. And so this is for the brake system. This is optional. Uh, I've seen people leave this on, but I've also heard that metal shavings can come out of this pump when it's bad. So we're taking off the vacuum line there with that clip, and then we're just using uh, 13 millimeters. There's four of these bolts that we're taking off, and then the entire pump will come off. Okay, so it's a little harder to get to these. So it's, there's also a little clip here that's holding a harness in, so we're just going to pop that out of the way. And uh, then, yeah, it's just four bolts. It comes straight off. As you can see here, you'll see it with it off here. So four bolts. One of the bolts tends to stay in place, and that's what it looks like here. So this is just another recommendation. I wanted to change this out because it had 100,000 miles on it, and this is the best opportunity to get in here and take this off. But again, I have seen people leave this on or just loosen it to get it out of the way for getting the timing cover off at the front. But uh, uh, next we're going to go after our little lawn cover here. These are 13 millimeter bolts just going all the way around, prying it up with the screwdriver and uh, this will pop right off. There's no connections inside, it just has all the brains for the cylinder deactivation. There is a gasket here as you see. Um, most of the time you can reuse that gasket. We had a new one come in our kit and uh, now you're seeing these uh, these are the holes that we're going to have to plug. So we have our Brian Tooley Racing DOD plugs. So these plugs are tapered. They have a little rim at the top. So you can kind of put them in by hand and push down on them until they pop in. When you're driving these in with a hammer, I would recommend a rubber mallet or a plastic hammer because you can chip the corner of these. So uh, this is what they look like going in. Make sure you don't drop them down into the engine. So we're going to go ahead and uh, set these in here. And then you can uh, give it a little tap. You'll see it kind of pops down into place. And then we're just going to drive it down. And then you will hear it bottom out and make a different sound. And that's how you know it's flat. Just don't break them. Okay, we're going to remove these little Christmas tree tabs that are holding this harness in place. So this is right below where the uh, crankshaft is. Uh, so we're just getting some pliers to kind of pop this off and that just gives us a little more room. Uh, there are two of our 13 millimeter bolts here for the timing cover that are on the bottom and so they are kind of hard to see because you're coming up from the oil pan and so just make sure you don't forget those two and then we're going to go ahead and uh, break off the rest of the timing cover bolts. We're working our way around and you do have to be careful. There are some that are hidden down there so you might think that you've got them all. There's a little bracket here we're going to remove and if you saw behind it there's another one there. So this is a half inch drive or 13 millimeter. Make sure you get all of these bolts out as you're prying this off and be careful as you pry it off not to mar the mating surface. There is an electrical connection on here. You cannot get to it because it's down under into the oil pan. So we're going to leave this cover down here. I did unloop it so that we had a little bit of more room here. Timing cover has two coming from underneath the oil pan. The next two up are long on each side and then they're the same. Now this is where we're looking at our timing dot. This is how we know with that arrow that should be pointing directly down and that's going to be top dead center on the engine. Now when setting the timing with the oil pump out of the way you would be able to see on the bottom of the screen there you see the dot on the crankshaft 
and then at the top you see that the arrow was pointing down that's the arrow that we can see so we're going to assume that we're at top dead center uh, on piston number one because we've locked the crank into place and so to explain top dead center a little bit more that's where the piston has made it all the way to the top and it's starting it's just about to start heading back down so that's how they set up the timing on these and so it's going to be the driver side first piston is piston number one and that's when that arrow is going to be pointing at that dot now you'll also see other videos where people are doing this same procedure and their arrow is pointed up and so you kind of freak out a little bit and the reason why is that's just the orientation of the camshaft now we will get into this later in the video but as you see the camshaft there's a dot there at about the three o'clock position so that's when that nub is there that arrow is going to be pointed down if that nub were at the nine o'clock position the arrow would be pointed up and you could still be at top dead center so we just want to be consistent we want to set it to top dead center cylinder number one driver side with that arrow pointing directly down and uh, then as we take everything apart and put it back together we want it to line back up so we'll show you that later on the video uh, but what we did in this case was get it to top dead center cylinder number one arrow pointing down and then we locked the crankshaft so that we would know that the crankshaft has not moved and that that dot that we cannot see is pointed uh, directly at our arrow Okay, and so we took our paint pens and we made several marks on the chain links so that we're going to know as we put it back on how everything is lining back up. Now that doesn't mean that all we have to do is line up the top part. We have to make sure that the chain hasn't come off on the bottom. Um, it's all going to come down to the arrow pointing straight down, but uh, putting these marks, the red, white, and blue on here will help us as we line everything back up and then check our timing to know if it's uh, where it should be so we will show that later in the video but I wanted to explain it now a little bit now we're doing this job without removing the oil pump these are oil pump alignment tools and they were not very good at all but the idea here is the oil pump has to be perfectly centered so you would put these tools into place where you could remove the oil pump and put it exactly back where it came but these tools were not very good and we were doing everything we could to not remove the oil pump because uh, if it's not perfectly centered you can have low oil pressure you can ruin the pump itself so um, what we're doing is we're removing the chain and everything and doing so leaving the oil pump exactly in place and not touching it these tools did not work very well as you see they only touch the top of the oil pump it would be better if they kind of wrapped around it so you know that you're putting it exactly back where it was but uh, yeah we didn't use them at all also just so you know you cannot remove this oil pump fully without dropping the oil pan okay you will also go through with your scraper and clean all the mating surfaces on the oil pan and the timing cover face so we went through just for our reference and made some other marks uh, where the keyway was where the timing chain currently was and again you don't want to just line these back up and think that you're good you might still be off on your timing because uh, the chain will come off uh, and in, the chain itself doesn't have to be in any particular place it's that timing arrow has to be pointed down and so we just wanted to do this to try to help set us up uh, as we're putting everything back on and uh, what you'll see later in the video is that did help us get it in the general direction but uh, we still can be off by a, a tooth or so and we'll have to make adjustments so we'll show that later in the video but it never hurts to make uh, some extra markings so we just did one on each side of the keyway and drew a line so that we knew uh, where the keyway was when we were at top dead center next we want to release the tension off the tensioner and so what we're going to do is bring in a little pole little rod here with a soft tip with an extension we're just pushing on the end of this and as you see we're pushing right here on the chain and so as you push on the chain it will start to collapse the tensioner and so as you're pushing on it then what you'll want to do is line up a small allen key okay. yeah. that will go through this hole and through the tensioner and so uh, as we keep pushing on this we can just uh, line this up and push this right through got it now we're taking our 24, 24 millimeter mm. socket and we're removing the uh, phaser bolt. This is the cam bolt. And so we're gonna go ahead and remove this. 
Now this phaser bolt is a one-time use bolt uh, and it's also an actuator so you want to be very careful with it and get a new one and it is different from 2018 uh, or 2017 up so make sure you're getting it for the right year. Okay so walking the chain off basically one link at a time we're pushing it back and getting it off of these teeth. We're also trying to hold the chain upward so it doesn't come off the lower sprocket if possible. Okay, so the bottom flathead's holding it as we're walking it up and around. Okay, so there it is. Took a little bit of prying, tooth at a time. Just walked it off. Now we're gonna hold this up. We're going to try to keep it from dropping. There we go. Now, most people just drop the chain down in there. They don't really care. We're just trying to keep it in the same spot. It's not the end of the world if it does come off because we're going to align the timing when we put it back together. You will want to put zip ties around your cam phaser so it doesn't unwind. Be careful with that. Next, we're removing the high pressure fuel pump lifter. So, uh, 13 millimeter and this just pulls right up. You will see there is a hole on the side that points towards the passenger side. side the That's uh, how we'll put it back in. Passenger side. Okay. okay, we're gonna go ahead and take our T40 Torx. And so we're gonna come up here to this plate that holds the cam in. And so we're gonna go ahead and break these loose. So we went ahead and made an alignment mark. You'll see that that nub on the cam was about the nine o'clock position. We'll remove our plate. And if you look at the backing, the seal on this is pretty uh, flat. So I'm glad I got a new one. Now, as we start to pull the camshaft out, we want to be really careful not to drag the cam lobes across the uh, camshaft bearings. Uh, so as you're coming through here, you'll start to pull it. And what you want to do is stabilize it by lifting at the very front of the cam. You can put a screwdriver in the front of the camshaft too to help uh, you with some leverage to lift it up and down. But we want to make sure that as this is coming out that we're yeah. being I'm very gentle as we come it. across each of the cam bearings. So once you remove the cam, then you want to check all those cam bearings and clean them out. Uh, just make sure everything's cleaned down in here the best that you can. So as we pulled our cam out, we did make it. It was pretty tight up against the uh, AC condenser, um, but it did make it out. Okay, so this covers the first part, basically tearing everything down. Please check the video description. I'll put the other series to this where we reassemble everything and uh, other videos maybe as references. So always check the video description because I will have updates or other information that will be helpful that maybe I didn't know at the time of the video. So if you're new to the channel, please feel free to subscribe and uh, check that video description for more info. Thanks, guys.